Well, Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Uh, I guess first I'd like to thank everybody for the ones that are here, the ones that are on Zoom, and then also the ones that watch the video. I want to thank everybody. And I guess uh, today we'll be back continuing in the book of Hebrews, starting in uh, chapter 8. We finished 7 last week talking about uh, the priesthood, Mel the Melchizedek priesthood. And uh, today, you know, we'll be continuing on in chapter 8 of Hebrews. Before we get started, let's call in, you know, our assembly to order by the blowing of the shofar. All right. Well, let's go to Yahuwah in prayer and just ask him to bless this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you do and the many blessings that you give us. Father, we thank you for all that, that's going on right now. We know that your hand is in the middle of everything. We've got problems in, in the Middle East and there's problems here in the United States. And Father, we know that you're stirring the pot. And we just want to thank you for allowing us to be at this time, seeing the 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 prophetic word, your your word coming to uh, to fruition. And we thank you for, for all that you do. Father, we ask that you help us today with your with this study and and father give us wisdom in the in what we're going to be going through help us to 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 know what your your word is saying and you know from a not just not just from a physical standpoint but also the spiritual standpoint and we father we just ask that you give us that that wisdom father help us to understand in other words to have us help us to walk in what we learn help us to stay close to what you tell us to do, to do and help us to, to be what you call us to be. All this we ask and pray in Yahushua's name. Amen. Okay, so uh, let's see. Today will be in the book of Hebrews. Starting in chapter eight. Okay, so last week, you know, we talked about the Melchizedek priesthood and that uh, Yahusha is our Kohen Haggadah. He is our high priest. And he is, uh, you're going to see here in just a second that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And, you know, so he is interceding for us and he is making the sacrifices, or he made the sacrifice, the one and only sacrifice, and he is interceding for us, for, you know, for us to Yahuwah. Okay, so uh, starting in verse one, it says, the point of what we're trying to say is this. We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of majesty in the Shamaim, in the heaven, and uh, who ministers in the sanctuary and the true tabernacle set up by Yahuwah, not by man. And since every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices, it is necessary for this one also to have something to offer. So the, the earthly high priests were chosen by Yahuwah, and they would make offerings for the people, the sacrifices and the offerings, for the people. Now, this one that they're talking about is Yahusha, and his offering to Yahuwah is his own blood and him being our perfect sacrifice. So now we don't kill animals because we'll see here in a little bit that the blood of bulls and goats and animals doesn't please Yahuwah and it doesn't take away sins from us. All it is is a placeholder. And the killing of an animal in place of our sins should cause our conscience to, to you know, to, to have, to, to be conscious that an animal had to die for something that we did. 
and it wasn't the fault of the animal it was our fault and hopefully what it would do is deter us from further sinning and so the but the blood of the animal did not cover or atone for our sins only the blood of the messiah can do that okay verse four it says now if we were on if he were on earth he would not be a priest since there are already priests who offer gifts according to the law okay now there are priests that are offering gifts according to the law and but now one of the things that that we've talked about last week and i think we'll get into it again this week but the the law has not been done away with but it has been uh, changed and the the priesthood has changed which necessitated a change in the law and the priesthood being changed is the fact that that it went from the levitical priesthood which the levitical priesthood is in the melchizedek priesthood so don't think they're two different priesthoods they're one and the same it's just the melchizedek priesthood or the the levitical priesthood was a uh narrowed version at it and held at that time until messiah came and he died and then it opened it back up to the full-blown melchizedek priesthood which allows anyone that wants to be in covenant to become a priest in the order of Melchizedek for Yahuwah. Okay, so uh, the the Levitical priests that are still operating under the old law are basically making these sacrifices and stuff that and they because they haven't accepted Yahusha as Messiah, and so you know it's uh, until they realize that Yahusha is the Messiah and that he died in his his death and his uh, blood was shed for that perfect sacrifice for all of us until they come to that realization they're still operating under the old covenant and they're not operating under the new covenant and so by them operating under the old covenant they don't have the benefit of the ruach kodesh the holy spirit because that's the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant the new covenant is uh and we're fixing to get into it and i'll show you but it's where Yahuwah puts his spirit in us and he puts his word in our heart and in our mind so that we don't sin against him. And by him having his spirit in us, now that he, Yahuwah, has taken charge of us staying in covenant. And I know that, you know, we still have that uh, uh, free will. We can choose not to, but he's doing everything in his ability any everything that he can to keep us in covenant outside of us deliberately refusing so when uh when we you know when we accept him follow his commandments and have the faith that yahushua is the messiah then he will put his word in our heart and in our mind and that is his ruach kodesh that is his spirit okay now verse five it says the place where they serve is a copy and a shadow of what is in the shamayim this is why moses was warned when he was about uh, about to build the tabernacle see to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain okay so all the, the things that, that moses put together that he built the mishkan the movable temple was explained to him how to do it by Yahuwah and Yahuwah wanted it done just exactly like he required because that's the way it's set up in the heavens in in Shammai okay so uh okay verse six it says now however Yahusha has received a much more excellent ministry just as the covenant he mediates is better and is founded on better promises. For if the first covenant had been without fault, no place would have been sought for a second. But Yahuwah found fault with the people and said, okay, now I want to stop right there just a second. The covenant that we're talking about was ratified 
in blood. It was a blood covenant. And that blood covenant, it stands forever. Now, you know, so the the covenant itself has not been done away with. And this is something you need to make sure you understand. But some of the terms and conditions of the covenant has been changed because the, the okay, so a covenant is a contract between more than one person. It's two or more people. Okay. And that covenant, the only way that it can be actually done away with is if all sides decide to do away with it, then a covenant can be, or a contract can be done away with. But here, one of the things that it says, it talks about the covenant was at fault. The old covenant was at fault. The covenant itself was not at fault. Yahuwah is one party of the covenant and he was not at fault. He didn't make any mistakes. And he, he tells you that the people right here in the very, in verse eight, it says for you who have found the fault with the people, that's us. So us being stiff necked, us being hard headed and us being not wanting to follow you who was the fault. And it, it relied on, on us solely to stay in covenant. Okay, they in the old covenant, they didn't have the benefit of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach Kodesh. And so by them not having that, they had to they had to fight the battle themselves and stay in covenant. So they had to make sure that they did it. Because, you know, if you read like in the Shema, you know, it tells you that you are to uh you know speak of Yahuwah's word as you walk along the way, as you rise up and you lie down, you tell, you know, teach it to your children and, you know, and it, it, it keeps going, you know, it goes on, but you, which is, I'm talking about us, were uh, required or responsible for staying in covenant. Okay. Now I want you to pay attention to what we're fixing to go over right here. And this is the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. Now the, the terms and conditions of the old covenant still stand with the exception of that, of, of you being responsible. Now you who has taken charge of that. And that, and before there was an earthly uh, high priest and now Yahusha is the high priest. He is the Kohen Haggadah. So by the, 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 basically the Levitical priesthood, the sacrifices and all that's associated with the Le Levitical priesthood has been replaced by Yahusha and his blood being shed for the remission of our sins and not that of animals. Okay, now I want to read. Now this, this is in, this is the new covenant that Yahuwah is speaking about. Okay, starting in, uh, well, it's in the rest of verse 8. It says, behold, the days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Now, I want to stop right there. Nowhere do you see covenant is for the Gentiles. It's not in there. So if you're a Gentile, and I'm not talking about, well, we, we were raised gentile i was my family was but we are no longer gentile because a gentile is a non-covenant keeper they don't they don't keep covenant so when when we uh decide or find out figure out that we need to follow commandments follow yahuwah's word and have the faith that yahusha is the messiah now we're no longer a gentile we're a former gentile we are now a yahudite or a Jew. And this is what he's talking about. If you want to be part of the new covenant, you have to figure out how you're going to become a Jew, the part of the Yahudim. Okay, so he's going to make the covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, Yehuda. Okay, it will not be like the covenant that I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt because they did not abide by my covenant and they and I disregarded them. Okay, they didn't follow the covenant when they were in the uh, in the desert and wandering around. The only way that they, the, if they did follow it, is only because Moses made them. 
And Moses was very strict about making them follow the covenant, but they didn't want to follow the covenant. And see, the benefit of the Ruach, the, the Holy Spirit with us, is he gives us the power and the want to, to follow, you know, it be in his covenant. Okay. And if you don't want to follow the Torah, if you don't want to follow the law, then you don't have the Ruach. You don't have, you don't have that. You don't have the benefit of the Holy Spirit. And I know that, you know, a lot of people would take uh, exception or offense to what I'm saying, but it's the truth. I mean, without the, with, you know, without the benefit of the Holy Spirit, then you don't have the want to, you don't, it's, it's, you don't see the need to follow the old, the, you know, the old Testament, the, the, the commandments, but the commandments, I mean, if you read Matthew chapter five, uh, verse 17, Yahusha himself said that, uh, that, you know, not one jot or tittle is going to be taken from the law, you know, so he's not going to change. He didn't change the law. The only thing that changed is at his death, the priesthood changed. Okay. Just, and in that he became the, the, the high priest, the Kohen Haggadah, and no longer are men considered high priests. And also the sacrificial system has changed. So the law had to be changed. Okay. That part of the law, not all of it, but just that part of it. Okay. And then also, you know, to, to go along with this, if you go to Ma Matthew 5, 45, I believe is the, it's where it's located. It talks about Moses is going to be the one that's going to be accusing people in the, in the judgment. So if Moses is accusing people, what does that mean? It means that we're going to be judged by the Torah. How did we follow the Torah? So Moses is, you know, is regarded as the first five books of the, the scripture. It's, you know, uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, uh, Numbers and Deuteronomy. So it says that Moses is going to be the one that's going to be accusing us. Well, why would Moses do it? Because Moses wrote the Torah and the Torah is what's the Torah is the law. That's what we're going to be judged by. Okay. Uh, now what will get you out of trouble is if you have mistakes and you're not following the Torah by accident, then Yahusha, if you believe that Yahusha is the Messiah, then hopefully well, his, his blood will cover your sins unless you're deliberately not following the Torah. So you're not acting like a family member. You're not living in the kingdom of Yahuwah. You're still living in the kingdom of the world. And he will tell you if you are that he doesn't know you because you're not part of his family. Okay. But anyway, he said that he's going to disregard them for not wanting to follow his covenant. Verse 10, it says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares Yahuwah. Okay, this is the covenant. I will put my laws in their minds and inscribe them on their hearts, and I will be their Elohim, and they will be my people. Okay, so what did he say he was going to put in our heart and in our mind? His laws, his Torah, his Ruach. Okay, verse 11. No longer will each one teach his neighbor or his brother saying, do you know or know Yahuwah? Okay. Because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. By speaking of a new covenant, he has made the first one obsolete. And that is obsolete and, and, and what is obsolete and aging will soon disappear. Okay, so the part of that covenant, it's not talking about the entire covenant. It's talking about that part of the covenant has been, it's going to, it's obsolete and it will disappear or it has disappeared since the, the blood of Yahusha now covers our sins and not the blood of, of bulls and goats. That part of it has disappeared. Now there's still people that believe that that sacrificial system still stands. Well, when, if you believe that sacrificial system still stands, then you're denying Yahusha his rightful place. And you're saying that either, either you don't believe that he's the Messiah and that his blood doesn't cover your sins, or you believe that it's not good enough that you have to do more. Well, in either case, you're, you're, you're trampling the blood of the Messiah underfoot. And that's something that we don't want to, 
to be doing. So again, this new covenant, you need to make sure that you that you get this and 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 understand this, walk in it. That by us following the Torah, believing that Yahusha uh, is the Messiah and that his blood was shed, you know, for the remission of our sins, then Yahuwah, it's a promise right here that Yahuwah will put his word in our heart and in our mind. And that is the Ruach Kodesh. That is the Holy Spirit. So uh, now if we have his word in our heart and in our mind, then anytime something comes up that prompts us or tempts us to violate the Torah, the scripture, he will, we will, he will remind us that that's against the Torah. That's against the scripture and we should not do it. Okay. So let's go to chapter nine. Okay. Now the first covenant had regulations for worship and also an earthly sanctuary. Okay. A tabernacle was prepared in its first room was a lampstand and a table and the consecrated bread. This was called the holy place. Behind the second curtain was a room called the most holy place, containing the golden altar of incense and the golden covered ark of the covenant. Inside the ark were, uh, were the gold jar of manna, Aaron's staff that had budded, and the stone tablets of the covenant. Above the ark were the cherubim of glory, overshadowed by the mercy seat, but we cannot discuss these things in detail now. Okay, so he's he's just he's describing the earthly sanctuary. Well, if you if you study this earthly sanctuary, these the the things that are in this earthly sanctuary have been replaced by the body of Messiah. Now, if you look, you know the the uh, the the lampstand. Let's okay. Let's just we'll just go through some of these. The lampstand. We know that the Torah, the Scripture says that the Torah is light. We know that the lamp has oil. The oil is uh, in the, in, when you see oil referenced in Scripture, it references obedience. So our obedience is what feeds the light. The light is the Torah. Okay, then. The, the table and the consecrated bread. We know that the consecrated bread, Yahusha is that consecrated bread. It's the representation of Yahusha. And then, you know, that, so behind the second curtain, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's called the most holy place and it's the altar of incense. The altar of incense is where the, the incense it, in that, uh, most holy place, the incense carries the prayers of the saints up to Yahuwah. And the Ark of the Covenant holds the covenant. That is the heart of Yahusha. And so uh, the, the jar of manna, we know again, is the manna represents the bread from heaven. It represents Yahusha and Aaron's staff that had budded and the stone tablets. These are uh, uh, the Aaron's staff is the it represents basically the scepter or the it's what it's the the leadership the it, it the the uh, I guess the it's the sign that Yahusha is the the shepherd of the people and then the the uh, the uh, the covenant itself is the word of Yahuwah that uh, that we follow when we follow his covenant then uh, you know the stone tablets that you know we uh, we follow the ten commandments and to follow the ten commandments you have to be following the others the ten commandments are just they're 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 an outline of the rest of the Torah. And if you don't follow the Torah, then you're not following the Ten Commandments. And a good example is, is you know, it, it tells us that we are to, you know, to, to love Yahuwah. Well, you can't love Yahuwah unless you're keeping the commandments because the definition of loving Yahuwah is keeping the commandments. If you, He says that if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And then, you know, keeping of the Sabbath is the sign of being in covenant. The keeping of the Saturday 
Sabbath. If you keep a different day, you're not keeping Yahuwah's Sabbath. If you keep if you keep the Sunday, then you're keeping the first day of the week Sabbath. And that first day of the week Sabbath is man's Sabbath. It's not Yahuwah's Sabbath. And Exodus 31, 13 says that that's the mark of Yahuwah. That's the sign that that you know that you're in covenant with Yahuwah, those that keep the Saturday Sabbath. So anyway, all of this is just an, uh, it's, it's a shadow or a picture, if you will, of what is now in place. It's the body of Messiah. It is his body that we're talking about as being the, the, uh, the main uh, Mishkan, main temple, where our bodies are our own temple. And so, you know, uh, we should treat our bodies like it was the temple of Yahuwah. It, our heart contains the, the word of Yahuwah. Our, our mind contains the word of Yahuwah. And so uh, right now, that's it's these temples that we're talking about were not made by man's hands. They were made by Yahuwah. And so, it, it, you know, anything built by man is not even in the same league as something built by Yahuwah. Okay. Uh, verse 6, it says, When everything had been prepared in this way, the priests entered regularly into the first room to perform their sacred duties, but only the high priest entered the second room, and, when, uh, and then only once a year, and never without blood which he offered for himself for the sins of the people that had committed in ignorance. Okay. So you may make sure you read every word there. It's committed in ignorance. If it's committed on purpose, then that blood that was shed does not cover it. You have to stop doing it, repent from it, ask for forgiveness, and then it will be covered. Okay. So these priests, they would go in once a year during the day of atonement, and they would make this one sacrifice, and they had to go in with blood. In other words, it had to be uh, they had to there had to be blood shed, and they had to sprinkle the blood. And uh, because without the sprinkling of blood, there is no remission of sin. Okay, verse eight. By this arrangement, the Holy Spirit <clears throat> was showing that the way into the most holy place had not yet been disclosed as long as the first tabernacle was still standing. It is an uh, illustration for the present time because the gifts and sacrifices being offered were unable to cleanse and uh, cleanse the conscience of the worshiper. They consisted only in food and drink and special washings, external regulations imposed until the time of reform. So these these places, these you know, as long as the the as long as the temple was standing, then you know, it, 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 what it, it says it's just an illustration, you know, for the present time and that uh, it was to cleanse the conscience of the worshipers. It was to help them get over the wrongdoing that they had done to Yahuwah. And, uh, and it says it only consisted of the food and drink and special washings, the external regulations imposed until the time of reform. Well, the time of reform was when Yahusha became the Kohen Haggadah. And that time, that, that reform, we're in that time of reform. So now we, uh, we recognize him as the Messiah and that our blood or his blood is shed for our sins. It's something, his blood is shed. He had to die for something he didn't, wasn't guilty of. And we have the opportunity to live for something that we deserve not to. Okay because of his blood but when you when mashiach came as high priest of the good things that have that have come he went through the greater and more perfect tabernacle that is uh not made by hands and is not part of his creation he did not enter by the blood of goats and calves but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood, thus securing eternal redemption. So now he is the high priest, and it's it's he's he he resides in a place that uh, is uh, it's greater and more perfect, and not by, made by human hands. And it says there 
and is not part of this creation. Okay, so this creation that it's talking about is here on earth. And but the creation that he that he resides in is in the heavens. And so we know that if you go to Genesis uh, chapter one, verse starting in verse one, and it says, Yahuwah created the heavens and the earth. Well, what it actually says is that Yahuwah created the Aleph Tav, which is the uh, Yahusha, by, by his own spoken word, the first word that Yahuwah spoke created the Aleph Tav, the, the Messiah. So he created the Messiah first, then he created the heavens, and then he created the earth. So he created the heavens before he created the earth. So the, the, the place of that Yahuwah resides is in the heaven, and it's not part of this creation when he created the earth. It, the, the earth is a, is a separate creation, okay? And so, uh, and it says he did not enter by the, uh, the blood of bulls and calves, but he entered by the most holy place once for all. Now, this once for all means that it, he did it one time, and he's not going to have to do it again. And but and uh, and he did it for all people. He gave everybody the opportunity, and everybody has the salvation ticket. And all they have to do is live like a child of the King. All they have to do is live according to the Torah and believe that Yahusha is the Messiah. Live like a child of the King, and then you will become a child of the King, and Yahusha will know you. Okay. Uh, and it's there, and it goes on and says, thus securing eternal redemption. It says, verse 13, it says, for the blood of goats and bulls and of the ashes of the red heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonial unclean, sanctify them so that their bodies are clean. How much more will the blood of Messiah, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to Yahuwah, purifying our consciences from the works of death, so that we may serve a living Elohim. So, in other words, if the in under the old covenant they used the 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 blood of bulls and goats and the the ashes from the red heifer. So, I mean, I know right now over in uh, Israel they're trying to uh, they, they've got red heifers that actually came here from here in Texas and they've been accepted by the the uh, the rabbinical priesthood over there, and they're going to start uh, with those heifers, and they're going to have uh, sacrifices, and they're going to for purification. Well, if that's true, I mean, I know that they're doing it, but if that is the way that Yahuwah looks at it, then what did Yahusha do when he died on the cross? What did his blood do? What they're doing is they're they're trampling his blood underfoot. Everything that he did, they're trampling under their feet, and they're 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 denying the the Messiah and all that he has done. Okay, so if if that worked back then, how much more is what it's saying? How much more would the blood of Messiah cover? Okay, through the Holy Spirit offered, he offered himself unblemished. To Yahuwah to purify our consciences from the works of death. Okay, and uh, so now we serve a living Elohim. Okay, verse 15, therefore Mashiach is the mediator of the new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance now that he has died to redeem them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. Okay, so he died during the time of the first covenant. It, it, he died during that time, and uh, but his death made it to where the old covenant was no longer in, the, the, the sacrificial system in the old covenant was no longer in effect. And, uh, but it, it uh, it says it cannot be executed while he is still alive. So he had to die. He had to shed his blood and to 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 execute the new the new covenant. Okay. This is why the first covenant was put into effect without without blood. For when Moses 
uh, had proclaimed every commandment of the law and all uh, to all his people. He took the blood of calves and goats along with water, scarlet, wool, and hyssop and sprinkled the scroll and all the people saying, this is the blood of the covenant which Yahuwah has commanded you to keep. Okay. So Moses killed the blood, killed the, the, the animals and he sprinkled the blood on them. Basically is a just a precursor or a uh, uh, a shadow of what is to come. And it, it was a placeholder for the blood of the Messiah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Verse 21. It says, in the same way he sprinkled with blood the tabernacle and all the vessels used in worship. According to the law, in fact, nearly everything must be purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. In other words, without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. So uh, he's the, his, the, his blood, Messiah's blood, not the blood of bull and goats, bulls and goats, but the blood of the Messiah is what's cleansing us. But according to the law, it had to be the blood of bulls and goats. And that part of the law has been has been upgraded to the blood of the Messiah. So it's much better. It's a much better uh, covenant than what we had before. So uh, uh, verse 23, it says, so it was necessary for the copies of the, the heavenly things to be purified with these sacrifices, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Messiah did not enter a man-made copy of the true sanctuary, but he entered heaven itself now to appear on our behalf in the presence of Yahuwah. Okay, he is our Kohen Haggadah. He is our high priest. And he is, uh, uh, by his shedding of the, his blood, he is now our heavenly sacrifice in heaven and not here on earth. Okay, verse 25. Nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again as high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood that is not his own. So he did it once for all, and it's he doesn't have to do it again. Okay, otherwise Messiah would have had uh, to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world, but now. Uh, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age or end of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. So he does away. He, he, he destroyed sin and death. He did away with sin for those who are in his family, for those that he knows. If, if, if he doesn't know you, if you're not keeping the Torah or believe that he is the Messiah, then he's going to say in the end that he doesn't know you. And if he doesn't know you, then you will be judged by every word of the law, every bit of it. And so, you know, if you don't want to be judged by the law, then you need to be covered by Yahushua's blood. And if, if you're not keeping the law, every single word of it, then, you know, and, and nobody can do that. We all, and because it, it even counts mistakes and we will follow the law. We follow it to the best of our ability, but we do make mistakes, but they're not intentional. And those that are making the intentional uh, transgressions of the law, and we know that if you go to First John and read uh, uh, chapter two and three, we know that it tells you that the, the violation of the law is sin. The transgression of the law is sin. And that uh, that uh, if you say you know Yahuwah, but you don't keep the law, that you're a liar and the truth's not in you. So, uh, but so we know that these uh, uh, sacrifices that that they're doing is not covering our sin, and we're 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 going to be completely exposed unless you're keeping the Torah and have the faith that Yahusha is the Messiah. And uh, let's see. Uh, okay, just as man is appointed to die once and after that to face the judgment, 
so also Mashiach was offered once to bear the sins of many. And he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. So he will bring salvation at the end when at, yeah, after we die and we go before the judgment seat, how it's, you know, this, uh, this is when salvation is actually granted. We work on our salvation, but we are not granted salvation until the very end, the, the, during the judgment. And basically the way it uh, works, the best to my knowledge is the, the devil is going to be the prosecuting attorney. He's going to be the one that, that reads out everywhere that we messed up, everywhere that we, we sinned. And uh, we will be judged by Moses, by the Torah, where we have failed to follow the Torah. So Moses is going to be uh, the one that actually, how we're going to be judged. And Yahusha will be our defense attorney, and he will say whether he knows us or not, whether we've been uh, following the Torah and have his blood covering our sins. If that's the case, then the, it, it, it expunges all sins. And so by that, then we will be acquitted and allowed in the presence of Yahuwah. Okay, chapter 10. It says, For the law is only a shadow of good things to come, not the realities themselves. It can never, by the same sacrifices, offer year after year, make perfect those who draw near to worship. If it could, it, uh, it would not... Okay, if it could, would not the, offering have, the offerings have ceased? For the worshipers... Uh, would have been cleansed once for all and would no longer have guilt, have felt the guilt of their sins. Okay. So following here, here's something that, that we need to make sure we understand. And we know the law itself cannot save. You. In other words, uh, a physical law that's out, you know, the secular law, they can't save you and neither can Yahuwah's laws. Neither can they save you. The only thing a law can do, is condemn you. In other words, if you, uh, if it says don't sin, well, I mean, or don't, you know, don't steal, for instance. Well, if you, just because you don't steal, that doesn't save you, but it does keep you out of trouble. Okay. But the following of the law itself will not save you. What saves you is the faith that Yahusha is the Messiah. Okay. That's what saves you. But you can't accept Yahusha as Messiah unless you're following the law because he is the, the, the living Torah. And a law will only point out where you have failed. So if you, if you do everything right, then you're following the law, but still following the law is not good enough. And we have to, we have to believe that Yahusha is the Messiah, accept him as Messiah. And by us accepting him as Messiah and, and asking Yahuwah to cover our sins with his blood, then now we have, our sins have been atoned for. Okay, uh, let's see. Instead, those uh, sacrifices are an annual reminder of sin because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when the Messiah came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me in burnt offerings and sin offerings. You took no delight. Then, then I said, here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, O Elohim. Okay, so this is the Messiah speaking here. And he says that sacrifices and offerings he did not desire and burnt offerings and sin offerings. He didn't take any delight. So what is it that Yahuwah delights in our obedience? Okay. So if you have to sacrifice an animal for your sins, that means that you have sinned. Okay. What he wants is for us to not sin, for us to not, uh, not transgress his law. So he wants us to be obedient. Obedience is what, 
he desires. Not the blood of bull and goats, not, okay, those are just excuses, okay? So, and, and, and so if you are having to, to sacrifice these things, then that means that you are sinning, and that's not what he desires. Okay, verse 8, it says, in the passage above, he says, sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings, you did not desire, nor did you delight in them, although they are offered according to the law. Then he adds, here I am. I have come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. And by that will, we have been sanctified through the sacrifice of the body of Yahushua HaMashiach once for all. Okay, so it's in the scripture, it's in the, it's in the law that these sacrifices be done. But it's to, it's to uh, well, if you kill an animal, for something that you did and not the fault of the animal, you should have some guilt and thinking that I don't want to do that again because I don't want to kill an animal. You should have enough compassion to, to not kill an animal for something that the animal didn't deserve and that's something that you actually deserve. And, and so, you know, it's, it was set up to try to play on our conscience, our guilt. And so, uh, that's basically how I see how it's supposed to be set up. But at the same time, people were killing these animals and I guess not thinking twice about it. They were just giving the animals and saying, well, you know, I can do this. You know, I can, I can steal something and all I have to do is give up a, uh, you know, a, a bird or a, uh, a goat or a bull or whatever. And I can still, I, and so by them doing that, you know, they were transgressed transgressing the law on purpose and it it i guess you know it didn't you know it, it just didn't work that system didn't work because of the 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 failure on man's part not yahuwah's part if we would have been following what yahuwah said then it would have worked but it didn't because man would not did not follow it we we were just too stiff-necked we're too hard-hearted and uh so uh, it didn't work, and that's why it didn't work. It's because of us. And uh, but through the sacrifice of Yahusha, he did it once for all. And by him doing it once for all, now it puts us under the new covenant where he put his word in our heart, in our mind, and that that is the ruach. It is his spirit. Okay, day after day, every priest stands to minister and to offer again and again the same sacrifices, which can never take away sin. But when this priest offered uh, for all time one sacrifice for sin, he sat down at the right hand of Yahuwah. Uh, since that time, he uh, waits for his enemies to be his footstool for his feet, because by a single offering, he has made perfect for all time those who are being sanctified okay so us we are those that are being sanctified we are those that are trying to do the best we can at following the torah following his word and by his one sacrifice then he is making us perfect okay now perfect in the scriptural sense does not mean without flaw perfect means following that which is perfect the the torah the law is perfect and so uh, it makes us perfect because we are following that which is perfect but we will make mistakes and that's it and you can make mistakes under the biblical definition of perfect <clears throat> but not purposeful mistakes not willingly verse 15 it says the holy spirit the rock Kodesh, also teaches to us about this First, he says, this is the covenant I will make with them after those days, declares Yahuwah. I will put my laws in their hearts and inscribe them in on their minds. Okay, so 15, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach, also testifies to us about this. This is the Ruach Kodesh that he's, that, that he's putting in us. He puts his word in our heart and in our mind. That is his Holy Spirit. That is his Ruach. <clears throat> Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. And by his Holy Spirit being in us, it, his Holy Spirit takes charge of us being in covenant. If we veer off the path, the straight and narrow, the direct high Yashar, if we veer off of that, 
path, then the Ruach will prompt us. You get back on the path. You've sinned. You've stepped off the path. Okay. And uh, verse 18, it says, where these have been forgiven, an offering for sin is no longer needed. Okay. So when when we make a mistake, now it says that uh, it says where these have been forgiven, an offering for sin is no longer needed. We don't have to kill an animal. We do have to remember that Yahushua's blood is what covers it. Therefore, brothers, since we are confident, we have we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Mashiach, by the new and living way. Uh, opened for us through the curtain of his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of, of Elohim, let us draw near with sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled uh, to cleanse us from the guilty conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Okay, so by uh, we have the confidence to enter the most holy place. That most holy place is in the presence of Yahusha, okay, and by His blood, and it's the new and living way that's that's opened to Yahusha. Okay, He is a high priest, and uh, so by us following the Torah and the expansion or the 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 new understanding of the Torah through Yahusha. So in a, instead of it being a harsh uh, law, it's one of compassion and love. And the, to, if the, the part of compassion and love is what Yahusha brought as far as the, the interpretation of the law. But still, the, the love and the compassion still has to be followed in the Torah has to be followed in obedience. Okay. Uh, verse 23, it says, let us hold. Uh, let's see. Okay. Let us hold result, resolutely to the hope we profess for uh, he who promised is faithful and let us consider how to spur one another on to love the good deeds let us not neglect meeting together as some have made a habit but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching okay the day is the what it's speaking about there is the day of yahuwah that's the day that he's going to be returning and uh so we have the, the, the love of the brothers, the, the love of Yahuwah, and the love of Yahusha. If we deliberately go on sinning, okay, this is verse 26. If we deliberately, willingly go on sinning uh, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no further sacrifice for sin remains but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of a raging fire that will con consume all adversaries. All right, now, that's something that, that everybody needs to really pay attention to. If we deliberately go on sinning, now, we know that sin is defined in 1 John by sin is trans transgression of the law. If you violate the law, that is sin. Okay, if we deliberately, violate the law if you knowingly willingly violate the law then what it says is that no further sacrifice for sin remains there's no sir there's no sacrifice for that not even the blood of the messiah but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of the rage the raging fire that will consume all adversaries if you're not following the Torah and have the faith that Yahusha is the Messiah, you are considered an adversary. And so if you're violating, purposefully violating the Torah, then that's who is it's speaking of right there. Anyone who rejects the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. 
Okay. How much more severely do you think one deserves to be punished who has trampled the son of Yahuwah, profaned the blood of the covenant that sanctified him and insulted the spirit of grace? Okay. So if <clears throat> it, it's saying that if they violated Moses, then they would be killed on the testimony of one or, or two or three witnesses. And how much more severely do you think one deserves to be punished? who has trampled the blood or trampled the son of Messiah. Okay. So how do you do that? It's denying the Torah. He is the living Torah. You deny the Torah. You have trampled the, the son of Yahuwah. You have profaned the blood of the covenant. How do you profane the blood of the covenant? Well, if you're continuing killing animals, if you go on sinning and on purpose, then you are profaning the blood of the covenant and insulted the spirit of grace the spirit of yahuwah it uh to insult the spirit of grace is to just like we said a while ago yahuwah put his spirit in us by putting his word in our heart and in our mind and if you're not if 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 his if he hadn't put his spirit of his the law in in your heart and in your mind and you're violating the scripture on purpose and you don't care you are insulting the spirit of grace you're saying that you have grace, but and that you can do anything that you want, and that is insulting the spirit of grace, and it it is absolutely false. Okay, it says verse thirty. It says, "For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine; I will repay." And again, Yahuwah will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living Elohim. Remember the early days that you were in the light. Okay, the light is the Torah. The Torah is the light. In those days, you entered a great conflict in the face of suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to ridicule and persecution. At other times, you were partners with those who were so treated. You sympathized with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property knowing that you yourselves had a better and permanent possession. Do not throw away your confidence. It holds a great reward. You need to persevere so that after you have done the will of Yahuwah, you will receive what he has promised. For in just a little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. But my righteousness will, will live by or my, but my righteous one will live by faith. And if he shrinks back, I will take no pleasure in him. But we are not those who shrink back and are destroyed, but those who have faith and persevere or preserve our souls. So to shrink back means to, like Lot's wife, to look back and wish that she hadn't left or wish that, that you know, she didn't want to go. And uh, by us knowing the truth, by us being shown the truth by Yahuwah, now we don't want to look back and say we want to go back there. And if you do, then it says that he has no delight in us, that, uh, that we're not, that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to look forward, we're supposed to stay, stay the course, walk the straight and narrow, the direct how you are. Stay on that straight and narrow path. Follow the Torah believe that Yahusha is the Messiah. And then that salvation ticket that's in our pocket that everybody has, we can present that and be accepted by Yahuwah. Otherwise, if you're not following the straight and narrow, if you're not following the Torah or believe that Yahusha is the Messiah, when you get to the very end, you're going to try to produce that salvation ticket. And he's going to say, I'm sorry, but I don't know you. I've never, I've never known you. And if he says that, then that salvation ticket's no good. I mean, it, it it's a perfectly legitimate ticket and can be used. All you have to do is act like a child of the king. And if you act like a child of the king, he will recognize you. And a child of the king acts by following the Torah and having the faith that Yahushua is the Messiah. He followed the Torah. And that's what we need to do. He never violated the law. Paul never violated the law. I know a lot of people don't, they don't agree with that. But if you read, if you just read Acts 
24 through 28, you know, Paul was put on trial for, for uh, violating the Torah and put on trial for violating Roman law. And he, he was found not guilty. He was acquitted on both counts. And so there was no witnesses saying Paul violated the Torah, even though Paul in Paul's writings, if you're not, looking at the Torah from the Hebrew perspective, then you will think that Paul is saying it's okay to violate the Torah, but that is not what he's saying. What Paul is saying is that he's, he, he, uh, he telling you that the way that he's telling you is I think set up by Yahuwah to make people think that, if you want to follow him, that you will see the truth. And if you don't want to follow what Paul says, if you don't want to follow the Torah, then you will believe that he's saying that it's okay to not follow the Torah. In fact, uh, Peter in uh, Second Peter three sixteen, Peter says that if if you you know uh, understanding the way Paul teaches that if you are not versed in the Torah, if you don't have the Ruach Kodesh, if you don't have his word, his Torah in your heart and in your mind, that you will take the scripture and twist it to your own destruction. And you will take what Paul says and twist it to your own destruction. And Peter warns people. And all you got to do is read it. All right. So uh, that's going to, I guess, finish it for today. I want to thank everybody for being here today, those that are on Zoom, and also those that are watching the recording. I hope you got something out of this message, and I know that every time I study, I do, and I want to thank all of you for being part of our ministry and and uh, just uh, to say Shabbat Shalom. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Shabbat, and we'll see you next Shabbat, Yahuwah willing. That was wonderful.